to Becoming an Artist Live. Uh, this is a travel and art show. Every show we come to you from a different place somewhere around the world. If you're into this kind of stuff, be sure to click subscribe. Uh, today, we're very lucky to be with Sir Richard Taylor. How are you? Very good, thank you, Trey. It's lovely to be here with you, too. Thank you. And we're with the lovely Olivia, of course. Hello. A real, a real from Hamilton. From Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Center of the universe. Right, we're going to call According this According to all Hamilt Hamiltonians. <laughs> so, this is a show about uh, creativity, helping you unlock your artist inside. And one of the things that I love most about Sir Richard Taylor is his pure creativity, how he's inspired millions of people around the world through their movies. You probably know their movies, Lord of the Rings, Avatar, Narnia, the list goes on and on. Anyway, we're inside Weta Workshop, and we're gonna do a little bit of a tour with him, and he'll tell us some stories and that sort of thing. Sound like a good plan? Great, lovely to be talking to you all. <laughs> cool. Um, where, where should we get started with this right. tour? Well, well, right now we're in our, we, we could head into our weapons wall. We're actually in the heart of the facility right now. Just through this door is the sculpture studio and through that door is the design studio. So this is where uh, all the magical people make wonderful things happen. Right. So, so, because our show is about the creative journey, how about we start with you telling us about how your creative journey began? Uh, well, in a very uh, boring, <laughs> the story isn't particularly exciting actually. I had a great aspiration to get into the theatre. I wanted to be a theatre and costume designer, but uh, my wife and I moved to Wellington uh, when we were 17 years old, and uh, I did polytech studies doing graphic design, but then discovered the film industry, and it was uh, very in my late teens I, that I finally discovered that the film industry offered me and my wife the creative outlet that we so desired and set up a little workshop and just got going. You know? Great, great. I, I have a weird, this is a weird question that I, I never asked you and I'm very curious. Like why are you so calm and zen and you appear not to take yourself very seriously you're not, you've done all these amazing things, you've had all these awards, all this stuff, but you're so chill. I know part of it is just being a Kiwi. New Zealanders generally have this sort of medium poppyism, but, you, you're, but you're just really chill. Like, what made you like that? Uh, I guess it's all relative to your upbringing. Uh, my, uh, my dad isn't chilled, he's the opposite. He's a very, he's an aircraft engineer, which required an incredible discipline around oneself. Uh, at a very young age, my dad, my mum and I started building our family home. It took five years, that was very intense. Uh, but I learned the craft that I now do uh, in my trade through that experience. But uh, my mum was all about discovering, she was a science teacher, but all about the love of discovering things of rock pools and how a rock may uh, be split open and tell you magical things inside it. And, and I guess just the combination of those two things, growing up in the country, uh, having a very, very quiet upbringing uh, where, uh, you know, if you have fantasies in your mind, if you couldn't generate them with your hands, they weren't going to exist in your life. And uh, and I've just always had an attitude that uh, to carries oneself in a very quiet and uh, and appreciative way is a very good thing. You can't inspire the heights of creativity through threat and aggression. You have to inspire it uh, through love of the people you work with, love of the craft that you work in. Uh, love of the art that you're trying to make and uh, and if I don't communicate that onto the team how on earth do they then bring that back to the work so uh, I do try and um, uh, find myself in always keeping an even keel where possible. <laughs> That's the key, keep it all in balance. Right. Um, so I've got a go first question. Questions now, coming in. Your title is a Sir, which means you've been knighted. <laughs> now, our viewers want to know, what does it take to become a knight? Well, <laughs> I, I had no idea that this was going to happen. I, uh, uh, one day in the mail, I got a letter, and it was a letter from uh, the, the Queen, I guess, from the Queen's representative. And it listed everything that 
myself and my wife had done in our lives outside of the public eye. Right. And uh, I had no idea that some of this stuff was, was even acknowledged or known about. Uh, but uh, due to our endeavours to help young people in the creative industries, the charity work we do, uh, uh, our personal uh, efforts to, um, to educate and lift people into a feeling that creative futures could be part of their lives, all these things um, ultimately led to someone feeling that it was a nice idea. So, that, uh, you know, we, I, I'm an immigrant to New Zealand. Uh, my family are from northern England. My dad grew up in a mill town called Oldham. Uh, so for this to unfold and find myself in a scenario where I've been offered a nightclub is quite an extraordinary and complex thing for our family. And uh, it's a very, very... Um, uh, wonderful acknowledgement. So something I'm still haven't quite got a handle on. My, my daughter immediately wanted to know when we were going to move into the castle, and uh, and uh, I'm not sure my son has even got any grasp on it. Yet, so. so when you're coming out, is it like in the movies where the queen taps you on both shoulders with a sword, or are you just get a letter in the New Zealand Post? No, 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 it's, no, it's, no, it's very, very formal. It's the whole kneeling thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I chose. You, you have the ability to go to England and be knighted by the queen, but. As a Kiwi, I felt it would be disingenuous to our own uh, governmental or, or, or to, the, to the Queen's office here. So our Governor General uh, did the honours. Right. Uh, while I was being knighted, my daughter was spinning uh, pirouettes around the hall. Uh, she just couldn't contain herself. So it was actually a very informal uh, day and a very formal uh, experience. Uh, well, you're, we, you're, we've you're, entered the makeup room. Yeah, was why I'm here. Well, th this is our makeup room. This is where we do all the head and body casting, uh, as well as all the makeup tests. And around the walls is a collection of face casts that I've been collecting uh, for a long, long time. Right. Right. So for a for a night, you seem to have a lot of armor. Yeah, well, well, we've made over 30,000 swords in our career, uh, as well as all the bows, the arrows, I don't know how many arrows we've made. The, uh, the, one of the lovely things is that um, our sword maker, Peter Lyon, who's been making swords with us for 18 years now, he, uh, he's the only living sword maker whose swords are collected by the Royal Armoury of Leeds, uh, the Queen's Armoury. Wow. Such is the extraordinary level at which he builds the swords we make here. Uh, it's, it's delightful working in uh, making medieval stuff uh, such as this. So what you're looking at right now is lots of Lord of the Rings items. Many people on, that are watching this will recognise it. Here's the White Knives of Legolas. These are elven swords up here on the wall. And that side is all Narnia. This no, side no, is all... this is still oh. all Lord of oh, the Rings. Narnia stretches through there. Martin oh, right. and and such. The reason we put them on the wall is that our team work very hard and I want our team's uh, loved ones to be able to come through the building and appreciate what they actually get up to. Yeah. Uh, appreciate. Come on through, Alec, you're fine appreciate uh, that this is what it's all about and so uh, we've made sort of a mini museum out of everyone's endeavour. I'm very much of the view that when you make it for a film it's a prop but the moment you finish the film it becomes an artefact. This is a, a piece of creative art that's worthy of uh, recognition and uh, storing carefully. What do you, do you have to, we'll, we'll, wrap, we'll wrap it up here, but I know one thing everyone always wants to know is they're like, there's so many young struggling artists, or maybe they're like, they have a real job, but they really want to be an artist, they really want to be creative. Um, do you have any advice for people that want to foster that creative side of themselves? Creativity requires uh, a number of attributes, uh, passion, it, but of course, to be passionate is one thing, but unless you put passion into an action, so it also requires enthusiasm. It requires an ability to action that passion in your heart and turn it into a physical endeavor. So passion and enthusiasm, but then also tenacity. 
without stickability you have nothing. It, uh, everything that you make in the created world, unless it's a fleeting momentary uh, action, requires t uh, a very tenacious endeavour. And then talent. But talent can be learned. Talent, uh, gifted people have it in their genes, but talented people have learned it through hard work, through diligence and study. And so for me it's passion, enthusiasm, tenacity will bring you the, the riches of creativity. And to find yourself as a middle-aged person feeding off uh, the creative rewards of a life spent in, a, uh, in an endeavour around the arts is a very happy place to find yourself. You may not own the mansion on the hill or the Maserati that you dreamed of as a kid, but the, but the riches around you uh, may arguably be far more fulfilling because you've been inspired to create beautiful things with your hands and your mind, and that's a, that's a good place to, to be. That was very well said. <laughs> cool, are Curtis ready to wrap it up now? Yeah, I think so. Okay, think good. So. All right, well, thank you everyone for watching. 1,000 thank yous to my internet friends. Um, soon we're gonna be going over to Tapapa, we're gonna see behind the scenes of this amazing Gallipoli exhibit, which I know you were involved with. Wait till you see it, it's mind blowing. We're gonna to come to that with you tomorrow. And anyway, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Sir Richard. Thank um, you for being here with us at the Weta Workshop. It's a pleasure to have you come and visit us on this chilly uh, uh, Wednesday morning here in Wellington, New Zealand. <laughs> All right, thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Thanks.